on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast at the Rotary Club in Granville, Ohio, brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com and Sam Adams Beer. Danny. Yes. Yeah. What a what a great audience today. Lots of value. Yeah. This is the most different episode we've ever done. Like, this, is, <laughs> this is epic, yeah. though. Like, you have to li- you have to listen to this. Yeah. First live show, and now everyone knows about Small Arms Danny. <laughs> And we're available for your Rotary Club. Just shout us. <laughs> shout out us. <laughs> Let's go to the episode. <laughs> Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms Danny. <laughs> at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are live at the Granville Rotary Club. Yes, it's sir. our first live show, Cole. First live show. It's pretty sick. Trayvon. This is new. <laughs> this, this is definitely is new. new. Danny? Excited to be here. All right, yeah. so you guys already heard my intro, but when I throw it to small arms Danny, Danny, tell them why you're small arms Danny and what you do and what's your oh, skill why. set. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, Corey was the one who gave me this nickname. So uh, I met Corey back in 2011, have been working with him in some fashion over those last 10 plus years now. So. He thinks it's funny to call me small arms Danny because I used to do all of his bodybuilding arm workouts. So my arms aren't quite as small anymore. Um, so hence the name, small arms Danny. So the I- Danny skills in uh, basically journalism, email marketing. The title usually changes, but senior editor seems to be the common theme. So Max Effort Muscle and then his fitness subscription app. I kind of am the, the glue that holds Corey, Corey's uh, stuff together. So. <laughs> yeah, sure. Trey Speed. Um, so Corey calls me Trey Speed because four years ago I was running track in college at Akron and Corey called me up one day and I decided to drop out. And so when I dropped out, I moved down here to do an unpaid internship for Corey and uh, just kind of like found my way into some different opportunities. And now I'm here. Audio, visual, NFT extraordinaire. Trey does a bunch of great stuff that's been seen all over the world. Graphic Gangster. Yeah. So I'm the Graphic Gangster. My name's Cole. Uh, I'm an Ohio Valley guy too. I'm originally right by Caddis. I'm from Barnesville. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so I came up here, graduated from the Fisher College of Business at Ohio State. And during that entire time, I was in working with Corey in multiple businesses, teaching myself like graphic design, branding, marketing, stuff like that. And, you know, over time, it just came into the role where people just know me as a graphic gangster. So everything uh, visually that you see in the multiple businesses, Cole's making it, everything audio and visual between Trey and Kyle and everything that's being put up, edited and sounds a lot better than I could ever write it, Danny does. And so the way that our businesses work, it's local. We have a local um, business right down the street, but it's not open to the public. So we have the old school gym, which is a private, basically like powerlifting athletic gym. And in the back part of it, we have Max Effort Muscle, which is a supplement business that we sell direct. But within that, we have a fitness app where people all over the world do our workouts and diets, which these guys are capturing and putting up. And so between the supplements, the diet, we have people in up to 100 countries that are actually taking part in this information. And so this is one of the things that we do on a regular basis to kind of tell people about what we do. But Cole had a great idea that we thought we could offer some value to you guys is say like, what is some one thing that we believe is valuable that we do that got us here? And what's one thing that we're trying to work on individually to try to take us to the next level, which we think could apply to basically anybody, right? So yeah. Cole, we'll have you start saying it was your topic. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I just turned 25. And so I started working in business since basically I was like 19. And I've got to work with Braxton Miller. I got to work with the Conga Rose down in Houston who trained like uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Russell Westbrook. So they're like high level business guys. And I think the one value that uh, basically got me here and has got me to this position is basically seeking out accountability. So like I've always been the type who I wanted to present myself and know that anyone around me could rely on me to show up and deliver, deliver a quality product. And, um, you know, work like that. So I think that's one thing that's got me here. But the one thing I'm working on that I hopefully will take my career to the next level is I got to get better at delegation. So that might be, you know, uh, growing a team of other designers around me and other creatives because, you know, in my service, I'm, if, I don't, if I'm not at the computer, I really ain't making money and I'm not progressing my career. So if I can build a team around me, then hopefully, you know, I have multiple graphic gangsters and now I can create an empire. So. And, and what Cole's able to do is take thoughts because I'm 1 million percent an entrepreneur at heart. Like I can take an idea and make it into a business, money, 
whatever, but I need people to bring it into a reality. And what I can do is I can take an idea over to Cole and say, I think of this 1997 like rap album, you know, and I want to do it this way. And, and then all of a sudden I look like I'm on the rap album and it's called something else and Cole can make it. And it's like done in an hour. And yeah. people are like, what? The? So it's like when you have somebody that you can take the ideas to, but what I told Cole is he was in the Fisher College of Business. I said, every creative person I've ever worked with in all these brands, in the brand before Max Effort that you guys see around town, I had a brand that sold in 60,000 doors in 100 countries called Muscle Farm. That was a really big brand that was sponsored. The UFC, I had Tiger Woods, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all of these huge hitters. But we had a bunch of guys that do what Cole did, but they were slow. And I said, if you want to be great in this business, especially to work with guys like me, I need a quality product, but I need it timely. Because if I'm going to do things social media wise, I got to have it flipped to me because no one's going to say, oh my gosh, Cole, that little line was that, you know what I mean? Like no one sees that stuff. So sometimes designers hold themselves back unless you're doing a Picasso or something. But like when we're doing stuff on a regular basis, that was the, the big thing yeah. that I kind of So like, Cole. yeah, for me, like my issues is just like trying to find quality people and like people that want like want to work with this and they have a passion for it but who can also flip it like that and it, it's really hard to come by like those type of designers just because most creatives don't operate that way but if i i feel like if i can build a team around that i think they can do pretty big things all right trayvon dier trey speed your next buddy yeah so <clears throat> my one attribute that like i would say that got me that helped me get me here was definitely over delivering and so like one thing <clears throat> excuse me so one thing that like corey really helped me realize that like getting so like i edit all the pictures and the videos in the morning so i'm like recording corey while he's working out essentially and then that's kind of the content that we upload onto the website to the internet and so like one thing that corey always told me was being able to turn around the product get it to him fast have it to him so we can get it up on the website fast so people can see it and so one thing that i always pride myself on is as soon as we're done working out is getting the content edited and sent over to danny so he can get it up on the website like right away and that means like right away yeah. so like i want to be able to send this stuff to corey before he even has to ask for it because that just helps like build the trust in the business builds the relationship he knows that i'm already going to have the product he doesn't even he doesn't even have to ask for it well and what trey failed to mention and i haven't said yet is that this happens at 4 a.m every day so we have a 4 a.m crew there's a, a group of drug-free power lifters that work capturing our workouts from 4 to 6 a.m he lives downtown so he's got to be out of his house by 3 15 a.m monday through friday and by the way you're 23 23 yeah. 23 so young right so still like basically college age but the discipline that it takes to be there and then to over deliver the product but once again now i've wore a bunch of people out that haven't signed up for this in their life like that they're not really about this but what these guys have locked on to is as they're 25 23 young and they understand that this is this type of discipline and stuff that's going to lead to successful business so i just want to mention that because it's different if it's like 9 a.m trey but it's totally different you're walking in at 4 a.m <laughs> <laughs> so and then one thing that you think you're working on buddy um so one thing that like i definitely want to work on is like prioritizing the stuff that's in front of me so like i feel like everyone has a lot of different things going on in their lives but like just sitting down and actually prioritizing like this needs, this is where my energy needs to go. That's something that like everyone needs to always keep in mind because like sometimes when you have too many things in front of you, you know, like you're only giving 20% on this thing, 20% on this thing, but like you need to be able to give 100% on this one thing and then move on to the next thing and give it 100% as well. Great, good work, Trey. All right, small M's, Danny, Danny Walter. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, uh, one attribute. Well, I'm 31, so we're kind of giving you a wide spread of ages here. That's the other thing about um, the podcast that's good is we got 20s, 30s, 40s. So yeah. it makes it nice for a different perspective. For Go sure. Ahead, I guess kind of like the turning point for me was kind of when I started following Corey on uh, on Twitter. Didn't know he was in Ohio. So I was a sophomore at Capital University uh, doing business management and not a super confident person. And the one thing that I always have taken away up to this point is just consistency. So like, I never have considered myself extraordinary at like literally anything. So, but I'm always gonna be the person that just shows up that just will keep coming back. So kind of going off what you said, you're not gonna wear me out sort of thing. So that's- I kinda, haven't, it's been like 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it, it kind of started as being you know, just showing up to old school gym when it was in Pataskala, just, I wasn't working out with them. I'd ask them a question here and there and then working into uh, their training group. Um, so it was a small group of five to seven people on a regular basis. And then from there it was, all right, uh, can I have an internship? Just an unpaid internship. 
uh, which, you know, resulted in us in Corey's home office name and arm workout. So mm -hmm. I, I felt like I was well on my way there. Um, and then that kind of uh, with Muscle Farm came into a sales rep position there. And then here we are present day. So um, consistency is definitely the, the value for sure. You've continued over the evolution to show progress, like went from really helping with the initial skill set to now email marketing. So Danny can, you know, set up email campaigns, tell us exactly the percentages, exactly the money we make from them, how many people are opening them, you know, the copy of it. It's like its own skill in itself. So mm -hmm. it's been pretty. And then what are the things you're working on, Danny? Yeah. So speaking to that directly is kind of just as focus is something um, generally I need to work on. So it, Trey kind of alluded to it, but um, just going deeper in two to three items, just because you only have so much bandwidth in a day especially before noon for most of us, right? So like I'm trying to use as much brain power as possible on those like two or three things that really need it. And then leaving more, I don't wanna say mindless, but more of those mindless tasks for later in the day. So just really just allocating that time and focus to those two or three things so you can make a bigger impact. Job, Danny. One of the things I would say that probably helped me get here is that after actually being a coal miner in Caddis in the Valley, I just ain't scared. And, and I, I thought that, I mean, it's the, so the reality was what I saw four generations of my family do, I already did it and I was good at it. I've got it tattooed all over me. Like it's, it's inside of me, but they're also fourth generation lifters too. So everybody in my family lifted weights, but nobody did it as a profession. My, my great grandfather died in a coal mine explosion in 1935. He was already teaching my grandfather how to lift weights. He just passed away a year ago at 96. So it's the, this is just a lineage thing. I just happen to be the first person to say, I'm going to go do what I love. You know, these guys didn't get a chance to do that. But when I got to experience it, though, to me, that was the fallback plan. So why wouldn't I go try to do what I dreamed to do when I already experienced what I guess we'll call it, quote unquote, the worst case scenario was I have to move back home and go underground. Now the underground, I give none but love for the miners because that's what I grew up around and they could still make 70, 80, even a hundred thousand a year with the overtime. So if that's my fallback plan, then why would I be scared to go try to do this? You gotta remember, and you guys are old enough to understand this in 1999, when I moved here in 97, when I graduated high school, there's no internet and no one in my town has a personal training job. It doesn't exist in the Ohio Valley. I'm thinking when I get on the, you guys will like this. I get on the cage the first day to go underground and there's a 65 year old coal miner sitting there and he goes, what do you want to be college boy? And I go, I want to be a personal trainer. He goes like Richard Simmons. And I said, yeah, I knew this joke would work in this crowd. I knew it. I knew it. Every time I tell that joke to the young people, they're like, who's that guy? <laughs> so anyway, so uh, it finally worked. There you go. So anyway, the, uh, so my point, I was like, yeah, it kind of looks a little different like that in my head, but Richard Simmons, the only personal trainer they knew. So my point is that when I came here, it was like a fictitious, fictitious job no one had. I didn't know a person. Like that's me, I, I work around a lot of athletes. That was like me trying to go to the league. Like I didn't know anybody that went to the league. And so when I came here and I went to Columbus State for one year for exercise specialist certificate, it was the first year of the program. There's only five people in my class. Like I knew four year degree was not for me. So I was able to start my business early doing personal training, but here's where everything changed. The first time Irene gave me $20 to teach her how to do bicep curls, my first client that was a 60 year old female that the other trainer didn't want to deal with because he said she wasn't serious. I was like, give Irene to me. Like <laughs> I'm making $20. I was making 21 in overtime as a coal miner. So that right there was the difference, all the difference for me. So I was not scared. So that's the thing that put me here. Now that gets me in trouble sometimes because sometimes I don't get all my I's and T's dotted because I just go and I figure it out along the way. So, but the, the other thing that I'm probably trying to work on the best is that the most is there's been times in my life where I've been around some pretty big business stuff and I've never spoke up. I am a confident person. I work on it every day. I'm extremely disciplined. I also like to drink beer and smoke cigars and have fun too. And I like to be out with my kids, eating ice cream and do all that stuff. Andy knows me pretty well, but it's like, but there's been times when I would let that I'm a muscle guy coal miner hold me back from stepping up and saying, no, that's wrong. I know business like that. I've done, done millions of dollars of business and seen a little bit of everything. And so like one of the things I'm trying to do as I grow in my business career is say, when I know something and I'm in a room of hitters, that I'm a hitter too. 
and that I didn't get here on accident. It's by design. And then, yeah, there were some law passes here and there, but I earned it. And so that, that is one of the things that like from my confidence, I wrote a book on confidence because I'm a lot more confident than I was when I was living in that trailer back home. But the reality is the bigger rooms I get into is the, you know, show that confidence as I grow. So that's one of the things. Man, that was some heat, boys. What else we got? Good? No, yeah. yeah. I want to see like, is anybody out of that whole craziness we just spit? Is there anybody in the audience that has any type of questions around social media, marketing, content creation, any of the stuff that you guys heard? Because I think there's some value that we could offer because we're kind of in that new age of what's happening out here. You know what I mean? So, Andy, what you got? Yeah. Um, and my, my world's a little unique because it's public space and but like how much time should be allocated and how do you measure it? Yeah, so Andy Wildman asked how much time we should allocate and measure for social media. My answer to that is the best way is have a content calendar. So meaning that what we could do is I could have, let's call it twelve posts, let's say it's a or I'm sorry, thirty posts, let's say for the month. I could sit down and with these guys or with your crew and you could say, okay. What's a themed post for the week? What would we do on, it, it makes it easy. Throwback Thursday is a great example, right? What's a picture that we could post from the wreck that was a kid that went D1 or a kid that like, that just shows something from the past or something we've improved on. And so four posts this month that goes on our Facebook, what's something that can turn back the clock? Then on Monday, let's say something that we're working on right now. There's an initiative. Tuesday, it's, so it's like, you more want to think like, almost like a newspaper or a magazine. That's the way we run. That's the way in my mind, how I run the businesses and social media, because I have like certain things I do Tuesday, Thursday, certain things I do Wednesday. And what I'll do is we'll create them all in blocks of time and then let them out over time because creatively, sometimes things feel easy. Sometimes they don't. And you might have an idea and try it and not. So I think that you need to think about it more like, how can I like strategize this? create all this stuff and then it just kind of happens. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it, I think it makes it not feel so like, well, I don't know what to tweet because no one wants to hear what, I, you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, we're, we're very reactive. Yes. And, um, and not, you know, we, and we have our moments of creativity mm -hmm. and then, then we've got like six great things in like, like four hours and then we don't have anything good for. Yeah, for a block of time. So that you got to see like, okay, what, how can we spread these things over and just have some ideas that will trigger things that will well, create things like that too. You guys have anything to add to that? I, was, I mean, that's pretty much how we do it. That was good. Yeah. I would say like just stay consistent with the two, you know, you like, like let's say you come up with four ideas, just spread those out. Just save one for each day because then other thi like, like, cause then you might go back and you might have another idea that will spin off this and you got another three posts for the next time. So, yeah. Because social media, so this is the one thing that I always explain to people is like, you know, initially I started as a personal trainer in the gym. How would I actually talk to the person that came to me in the gym? How would I teach them? How would I interact with them? Good, bad, or indifferent. So even if somebody comes at me a certain way, I think, what would I say if this dude said this to me in the gym? You know, it might be some choice words, but I might say it the same way. So it's like the reality is I try to run it through a washing machine of, how would I react if I just ran into somebody and they asked me about this initiative? I would try to be authentic in the way that I typed it, in the way that I displayed it, in the way we would make it look, all of those things. So you just try to like take that like, oh, it's because it's social media away and try to make it actually like personal. You know what I mean? I, th I think also just like leaning, like with it being community focused specifically, like really leaning into that because in my mind, I just think gold mine. Like there's, there's got to be content everywhere for that. Highlights from flag football. Yeah. Like, there's got to be so much stuff out there. Andy, yeah. I would think. Highlights, new things going on in the community, stuff that's coming up. Like, And then there's the different mediums. You have social media, but then you have email marketing, stuff like that, stuff that you can create a newsletter just to keep people in the know, like to reach the people that want to receive that, that information. You're probably primed for an intern in this. Yeah. You know what I mean? To find a college person that would say, I could run social media for the rec and we could really make it and we could help with the content schedule. That'd be sick. Yeah. So. Yeah, if anyone's listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're listening, <laughs> shout out to Andy. <laughs> Reach out. We got you. <laughs> no, there probably will be. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else got anything? Principal, you got to have something for us. process 
yep. behind it of what it takes to get to that. How much conversation do you all have about being balanced and showing results with process along the way so people understand, yeah, this is great, but this is what you have to do to get to that point. Because somebody could look at you and say, what you have accomplished, but what you went through. Yeah. I think the one thing I'll let these guys weigh on, the entry point is something I try to talk about a lot. The first time Irene gave me $20, it's easy to go, well, Corey got hundreds of thousands of followers. He's doing all this now, but that was 20 years and they want it right now and they're going to be let down. And I, and I understand that. And that's why I'm, I think I had a benefit of building a business pre social media for 10 years and then with social media the last 10. So I have a good little bit of, you know, I think that was really good for me because I get to hone my craft. I had to be good on Bryce Road first before I could be the guy in Columbus, before I could be the guy that has people all over the world doing them. And I think that was a benefit to me. But you guys talk about good. I would say uh, with like, like people my age, I guess I'm still younger, I can probably relate to most high school kids, is they want to come out and act like they're the expert as soon as they start. They don't want to say, I'm the guy who doesn't know anything, but I'm trying to learn. So like whenever I was starting out, I, I was posting, I wasn't really posting myself, but the stuff I would post, I was basically saying, this is going to continue to get better. Now it's to the point where I got some years under my belt, I got some reps under my belt that I can say stuff confidently with expertise and know that's what it is. So I think kids now are getting tripped up on, I need to be the expert like today, day one. Um, so I think like one great thing that we do like with our businesses on social media is we like show the process. So like when we're starting a new idea or something, we're showing the beginning of it and we're showing the, 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 like the beginning product and the finished product. So like as we're building, you know, whether it's a new product or something or a new idea, we're kind of showing the process the whole way along the way. So like people don't just ever like see the final product, I feel like. Yeah. And then I just, the first thing that comes to mind is like, everyone wants to show the highlight reel. They know they don't want to show the misses, the missed squats, the missed deadlifts, the missed Olympic lifts, whatever it is. I mean, Corey's been 240 and bloated up and then 178 shredded to the bone. So I've been 215 in college and then I went all the way down to 168. So seeing like both sides of the equation and not being you know scared to do that and showing some vulnerability that that's huge like along the way yeah i think um i've had n not like knock on wood any crazy injuries but i've had some ups and downs lifting wise because i still compete um each year in powerlifting and natural bodybuilding and i used to do like the magazine stuffs but i i showed yeah one time i was super stressed in business in like the early like uh 2010 11 and i was like 240 and my wife was like yo like <laughs> Well, you know, what's going on here? Like in a, in a nice way, but she's like, I'm pretty sure I signed up for the other dude. But anyway, but then I, I went on a streak and I did 13 magazine covers, you know, at the craziest shape of my life. And I've, I've stayed kind of in between the two of those things, but I was able to show that process. And the biggest thing I tell people is there's a reason why we have a few hundred thousand downloads and not bazillions of downloads is because what we are preaching is difficult. We're telling people you got to be consistent. I'm telling people that they got to go to bed at a decent time. They got my alarm goes off at 3:20 a.m. and I have a non-negotiable habit. I don't go, mm, well, I'm a little tired today. That doesn't even enter my mind. I just go, and so that's the point. Like what I'm preaching is difficult, so it's not really a hack. It's not real shareable. It's like you want to sign up for real hard work to get good results then I'm the guy that's really gonna help you. We're the people that's really gonna help you. So I try to make sure and let these younger people know, yo, this is gonna take some time. There is some people that jump the process, but do they really jump the process? Because I would even say like my first company did really well. It didn't end exactly how I wanted it. And if it did, I don't even know if I'd have been prepared for it. I had to go through that to get what's here's next. So I think that that is part of the content, but it's also why it's popular but it's, it's take, as we add, it adds slower because I think it's not, we're not selling some dream, we're selling actual work. So hopefully you like hearing that because that's really what it is. So anybody else? Come on, Justin, you brought us here, buddy. Yeah, I was gonna say, building on Scott's question, how do you talk to people about, I mean, sometimes you have these goals that are so big and then once you get there, like that's when you feel lost, like you accomplish it. And oh. So two things, um, part of it, I think people have both that, that does happen. 
but that doesn't happen as much as people just don't get there because it feels so far away. So Cole talks about small wins a lot, which I think is really important. Like people, so for instance, I'm getting ready for a power off the meter body bone show. Well, that's my job. So my friends that are lawyers and I don't expect them to be like me, right? This is what I do. But I'm like, but you should be getting ready for vacation. You should be getting ready for anniversary. Like you should have your own, I guess, small wins that are in place to make you motivated. If that makes sense, right? I will tell you when I got to a certain pinnacle of business, and you start to realize that the process is actually where the sauce is at. And so this time around, as we're building things like this, building max effort, I'm in no rush because I'm trying to enjoy the process. Because when I look back, it's really not the dollar or the thing. It's really the process and the camaraderie with great people. And so I've continued to set goals for myself, but I think I'm less in a rush than I was before. And I just truly believe I'll get there. I just don't know how long it's going to take me. Because you know how it is. They say business is, everyone thinks it's like this, but it's really like this. You know what I mean? Which we talked about the other day. Mm -hmm. So I think the small, but cool, I think the small wins was something that we tried to really preach to some of the younger people. Yeah, especially like being young. Whenever, I'm a I'm an econ major, so I'm a big graph guy. Whenever I saw the graph of what, <laughs> of what, of what getting 1% better looks like every day, it's an exponential curve. So, and I've, and I've felt that in business, you know, every day, just trying to make something new, like months over months over months. Eventually, by now, I have a huge portfolio that I can look back on and be like, day one, it was awful. Now, this is what it looks like. Well, and Cole was in high school watching Braxton Miller yeah. and then was working with him shortly after. Braxton comes through the gym. So does, we have a bunch of Buckeyes that come through and it's like, that's now normal. Where yeah. before it was abnormal, right? But because of the hours and the work, um, you start to see those things start to come. And then when you have them small wins like that, you're like, wait, this is starting to be normal. What's really possible? One of the biggest things I learned from being around Arnold was he believed there was literally no ceiling. So I would go to California and I, because of COVID, we haven't done the last couple of years, but I go to his house for Christmas every year and for the last decade. And it's like, even an hour around him, you start to realize that everything is, the, the man has had unbelievable crazy things happen in his life because his belief, some might think it's arrogant, but I, I think it's on confidence because I saw the way he operates and works. And it's like, there's, they say no cap on social media. That's like a thing like, you hashtag, but it's real no cap. <laughs> so when I, when I would come back and think like, what, why am I limiting myself? And so I think it's like things that I strategically do every day is key to that. Listening to podcasts, reading books, like every day I do some type of small personal development to try to feed my mind in the morning, whether it's 10 minutes, whether it's an hour, it's a non-negotiable. And I think that over the last, cause I don't really have a traditional college education over the last 20 years, it's amounted to way more than I ever could have asked for from any type of school. And so I just think like that is, people think that's hokey. Oh, I don't want to listen to that self-help bull crap, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we'll find the one that is something that you need to personally work on. And I think people think about lift and weights and I'm all about that, but what about actually strategically working on something day to day that can make that better? And I think the value in that is, has been unbelievable. So unless you guys have anything else, anybody else, we're going to wrap it up. All right. Round table podcasts. I'm your boy, Corey G small arms, Danny at Trey speed and the graphic gangster himself. Cole Susak. Shout out Sam Adams. We got them as a new sponsor. Beer sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> hey! And MaxEverMuscle.com. We out of here. <laughs> <laughs>